ultimate reality. Ah. Is there any, how does the brain tell what's re real and what's not real? Is there any way the brain can know what's real or not real? It's not a clear explanation as to why our brain thinks that something feels real. There are certainly parts of our brain that help us to interpret the information that we have within ourselves, uh, that is, comes into us from the outside world, that allows us to put together a very vivid picture of what's going on out there. But why we actually perceive that sense of reality to be the most real is not a clear uh, answer. There's not a clear answer to that yet. People have done some studies looking at hallucinations and what the difference is between something that somebody envisions to be real versus something that somebody actually does see and what the differences are in the brain. It does appear to have something to do with parts of the brain called the limbic system which is involved in our emotional processing and also another structure called the anterior cingulate which is very involved in our ability to process emotions and also to focus our mind and focus our attention on different things. So it may be some relationship between these structures and these functions that actually identify something as being real and having that that realness feel to it, but why that happens and, and exactly why that happens in particular circumstances and why certain types of experiences like dreams may feel a little less real than our everyday reality and why mystical experiences feel more real than our everyday reality is, is not something that's clear at this point. Uh, so it, it, it's a very important question that we have to address, but uh, it, it really, it, and it stems from a very important problem that we as human beings must face, which is how do we really know what's out there, what's outside of our brains, and is there some way that we can get outside of our brains uh, or, or have the brain get out of its own way in order to see what is really out there. Uh, and I think that while on one hand science helps us to get part of the way there. What's interesting is that in these mystical experiences that people have, one of the descriptions that they give to it is that it is perceived of as being prior to uh, a subjective or objective sense of reality, meaning that it is it's really something that exists before we as human beings begin to apply our mental processes to it. It's something that, which is why it feels so fundamentally real. But what, so it's possible that through spiritual practices and spiritual experiences that we gain access to some level of reality that we don't normally have access to. The real question though is, is how are we actually able to do that? And what is it that we're actually touching when we do touch those levels? When people have a, a, a mystical experience, what usually happens, how they describe it, is that they begin to lose the usual sense of material reality around them. In fact, if they go far enough and they achieve a sense of absolute unitary experience, then all of the material world as we typically know it basically goes away. What we're talking about there is an experience of just pure being, pure awareness, pure consciousness. So it's not, it's not necessarily tied to anything material. And because those experiences have been described in extremely real terms, meaning that when people have that experience, they perceive it to represent a more fundamental level of reality than our everyday material reality that we normally live in, it creates a very big philosophical problem. Because when we actually try to evaluate what is real and, and how we know what is real, my colleagues and I have ultimately come to the conclusion that the only way to really make a determination is based on how real it feels, what the sense of it feels. Everything ultimately is reduced to that experience. How real uh, of an experience does it feel? How much does it feel like absolute reality? Well, in that case, when we look at the mystical experiences, they really are associated with an experience of much more fundamental reality than what our everyday reality is like. In fact, even when they're no longer having that mystical experience, they still perceive that reality to be the more real, to represent the more truer form, the more fundamental form of reality. And the material world that we live in is kind of a more secondary reality for them. So if that's the case, then we need to really look at what is the relationship between consciousness and material reality, whether or not the material world can actually be derived from a consciousness reality, or whether consciousness itself could even be the fundamental stuff of the universe, so to speak, instead of the cold dark matter or the other aspects of matter that physicists have been looking for. Maybe it has something more to do with consciousness. And certainly if somebody comes at it from a spiritual or religious perspective, where, and particularly a theistic perspective, where they're talking about